Hi, this is Patrick Inhofer, and I'm going to give you a quick look inside the color grade of Dead Man's Lake using DaVinci Resolve 9. We're in Resolve 9 right now, and the first thing I want to point out is, you know, we're working with this be beautiful, you know, Ari Alexa footage, but we're not getting beautiful pictures at the end. I mean, this is not, you know, the most perfect representation of what Ari Alexa looks like. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because this film was meant to emulate a 1980s slasher film. And if I come up here, I've got some reference images from a classic 1980s slasher film, Friday the 13th. And I used a couple of shots here as my references. For instance, for a lot of the forest stuff, I used one of these establishing shots. And the point that I was trying to do on, on this grade was allow me to cut as I bounce between the reference frame and this shot of our actual show, Dead Man's Lake, could I cut Dead Man's Lake in with this Friday the 13th footage and feel like, you know, yeah, I mean, it feels like they're in the same place. I mean, that was my goal, was to make Dead Man's Lake feel like Friday the 13th. All right, it was a classic 1980s film transfer very dirty negative there's actually film damage along the right hand side here and so I you know I loved using that as my reference to cut against let me give you a quick breakdown on what's going down here what you're looking at is the final image without any film grain on it because we did put film grain on this this is the version that has basically just our LUT applied to it it's just a good looking image it it's got its full color. It's not desaturated or in any way affected to make it look older. So this is probably a more accurate representation of what most people would probably want to get out of an Ari Alexa camera. Uh, it looks good. You know, it looks saturated. It looks HD. You'll notice if you look on the vector scope here, there's a lot more saturation, a lot more greens and yellows. If I move us back into the previous version here, you can see that I've pulled a lot of this color out, taken a lot of the color out of the skin. There's even um, in a little bit of blurring going on in some of the color channels, all designed to make it feel like a much older film. And then when we come back and turn on our film grain, we even get just a little bit more degradation of the image becomes a little more contrasty, a little more degraded. And that was the goal of the film, was not to make this beautiful showcase for Ari Alexa, but rather make it feel like something that was shot 20 years ago. Now, a quick breakdown of what the project looks like. I've got four tracks of video in here. Track one are, is the camera original footage. Track two are all the visual effects shots. Basically, anytime you see campfire, you, we've got to put smoke in there as well as fireworks stuff. And then, you know, again, on the back end here on, on this long tracking shot, you've got smoke coming out of uh, the car here. So everything on track two is a visual effects shot or something that went through visual effects. We've got on track three, our titles. All right, titles were interesting. You're going to see in this training how uh, they were originally provided to me as ProRes 444, and I had to change it up with embedded alpha channels. Uh, Resolve was not reading the alpha channels correctly, so I went into After Effects, had to split out uh, the alpha channel from the source video, and you'll actually see me do that, and I talk, I talk you through how I do that in After Effects. And then if we come back into the color tab here, you can see I've then used... You know, two sources here. I've got the fill in here and I've got an external mat. These were originally one file, ProRes 4444 with the alpha channel, and I ended up splitting them up in After Effects uh, to get make sure I got the really nice soft edged shadows and all that. And then finally on track four here is the film grain. And this film grain came from uh, the Cinegrain collection. This is the 35 mil, 250D uh, grain. Relatively soft. We didn't want to uh, necessarily go with the 16 mil grain. It, it's a lot more powerful and it's a lot more obvious. We lose some of this grain texture. Well, we lose the grain texture when you see it on YouTube. 
but um, it's still interacting with the video underneath it. It changes the look of the video underneath it when we turn it on and off. And so, you know, I'm okay with the fact that we lost that texture in the YouTube upload. Uh, because if we got with the 16 mil, it would have been a lot more obvious. It would have been more of a character, and, and we just didn't want that. We just wanted to feel. We didn't want to knock people over the head with it. Uh, as you can see, the footage ends. The credits start at 7.15. If I come in here into the color tab and turn off these top two tracks, what we've got in this project are 131 shots we're dealing with um, across this film. And... You know, and that's what we'll be going through from beginning to end. We'll be taking a look, for instance, in here. Here's where we started. That was the camera original. Here's where we ended up. And in fact, I've got on her shot here, I've got a couple different builds of how we did, uh, how this grade worked out. So we've got our camera original, all the nodes turned off in here. Let's close that down. Let's come to the custom LUT. So I ended up building a LUT. There's part of the training is where I take you through how I got to finally getting this particular LUT. And basically all this LUT does, if you turn it on and off, it takes us from this uh, log C profile, which looks wrong to the human eye, but has lots and lots of data and detail in there. You know, if I come up to the waveform here, you can see that, you know, all of this data is stuck in between, you know, the dark grays and the mid whites, but there's actually a lot more latitude in here. It's just, it's the way it's recorded. And then if we turn on this LUT, you can see now we've expanded this thing out, you know, all the way. We're filling up uh, the waveform. And uh, that was done primarily in this LUT. And you can see just how rich and vibrant it looks. If I turn on node four here, you can see I've started to add a bit more contrast, a bit more mood, and a lot more saturation, saturated upper skin tones, made her look prettier. Uh, but, you know, this is a very HD look. So I had to then work on grunging this up a bit. And that's what we ended up doing in here with the final. So in the final, we've backed off a lot of the saturation. We've backed off a lot of the color. And uh, we've also added uh, a little bit of blur, which uh, isn't quite so obvious on here. You probably won't be able to see it. But it's just a touch. It's a feel. It's not meant to be blurry. And, uh, we've, and we've only done that on a couple of the color channels to give us a bit more feeling like it wasn't shot on such a sharp lens. And then you can see when we turn on the grain, it adds a little bit more contrast in there, gives it a, a little bit more of a 1980s kind of feel. And yeah, that is my quick overview of Dead Man's Lake. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you in the grade along when it's released in October. Thanks a lot.